welcome to Sip Sip Knit. My name is Kim and I'm coming to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a podcast where I chat about crafty hobbies and some life stuff. Um, the crafty stuff includes knitting, crocheting, spinning, sometimes cross stitching, but um, I would say the majority is knitting because that's what I've just been the most focused on the last year. Um, I have my dog Luna that's right behind me. Um, my dog Yoshi was back there. I don't know where he went to, but I also have two cats, B and Pepe, that may make an appearance. Who knows? Um, and as the name suggests, I often have a beverage in hand, and this morning it is just coffee. It's a chilly morning here in Pennsylvania. It's still in the 40s, and I think it's been getting down to the 30s overnight. So. Coffee in a weekday is a great option. I'm taking a little work break. Um, I do still work remotely from home and it is about lunchtime right now. So took a little break to chat and do a little filming. Um, I've been doing this Vlogoween series um, that I've not been super strict about or strict at all about doing every single day. Um, I think I recorded once or put out one episode last week and then life got a little bit busy. Um, we'll talk about that more later. Just about what I was up to last week and over the weekend um, that I'm back and um, I'm going to talk to you about some of my uh, current projects and I do have a couple things to show you that I, um, are either whips or FOs. Um, so yeah, let's just get into the knitting portion. So first up, I do have a finished object, which is the Ghost Ranch hat. This is the pattern by Andrew Mowry that combines brioche rim, pre brioche brim ribbing with mosaic knitting for the crown. So you get these little blips of color. I did it a little bit opposite from what the sample and the pattern did. Um, the sample had the color shifting as the blips, but I did that opposite. So you do brioche for the first six inches at the bottom, and then you transition to this mosaic color work up top, and then you can fold over the brim for a really cozy, warm hat. It's very squishy and perfect for the now fall weather. So very happy with that. I did not use the suggested yarn, which is spin cycle, but I did use um, a Zauber ball by Shopple Wool and Quince & Co Sport Weight and like this silvery light gray color. It almost looks white in the camera, but it's actually more of a light silvery gray. So yeah, happy with that. And I'm wearing some knitwear. I've been really trying to dive into my knitwear now that it's cooler. Today I'm wearing my nurtured sweater, which is also an Andrea Mowry pattern that I knit last year. I think around end of summer I finished it. And this is knit out of Wool of the Andes, worsted weight. It's a non-superwash. Um, I will say, I think this might have been the only bottom-up construction sweater I've done. And as much as that can be a little tricky with length and sizing, this is one of my better fitting, more comfortable sweaters. Um, I think the only thing that I dislike is that it is a little bit scratchy, the yarn, so I could really do with a little bit of a softer yarn, but... I usually wear an undershort under it, so it's not too bad. Um, okay. And then I do have a few works in progress. I am almost done, almost done, with the second sock of the spider sock set. Here is my progress on the second sock. So I decided to go ahead and make the baby spiders on the foot of the sock. There are a couple reasons for that. Um, the main reason being that 
it occurred to me, <laughs> so this sock is just a comedy of beginner, beginner to sock knitting errors. First off, the yarn I chose to knit it out of is Madeline Tosh, really great color, very soft yarn, but it's a fingering weight single ply that is just 100% merino and does not have any nylon. Not the best choice for socks. <laughs> so I knit the first one last fall and then I was just over it and didn't feel like knitting the second one. So I put this project in hibernation, picked up and started knitting the second sock about a month ago. And as I'm getting through it, I'm realizing my tension and knitting gauge is way tighter now than it was last year, considerably. <laughs> Um, I'll pop a picture in to really illustrate as I tried on the socks, but when I got to the same number of rows beyond um, the heel on the first sock, um, I was about an inch shorter <laughs> on the new sock than the old sock, which is just a little bit insane. Now, I didn't do the baby spiders on the first sock, so there is that. So I really just counted rows until I got to where I decreased the toe. But for this one, I'm already several rows past. I'm about to finish this third little baby spider and then probably start the toe decreases. In any case, um, the reason I decided to do the baby spiders is because with using the single ply, it's not going to be very hard wearing and I'm not going to be wearing them out of the sock, out of the house, and thus not wearing any shoes with them and the baby spiders would not bother my feet and shoes, which was my concern to begin with was that the baby spiders would not fit in shoes very well. But since I'm using not the best yarn for socks, I decided I'll just do the baby spiders. But anyway, at this point, I really just want to get these done and off the needles and have them out of my project bin for a while. So yeah, just kind of over it. And um, I was talking to a few knitting friends and Lindsay suggested that we have a knit along next year because she also has knit the spider socks and was complaining that hers don't fit very well or stretch very well based on the fiber that she used for her socks. So yeah, could use another go around with better choices. second whip is um, my collective shawl, which I think I showed the very beginnings on a previous Vlogoween episode, but I've made some progress. This is for the Yarns by Design Ex Libris Knit Along, and i um, trying to get this done by the end of October. Today is October 18th, and I'm maybe a little under halfway done. Um, so let me hold it up on the right side so you can see. Um, I just started the fourth brioche band and there I think is supposed to be seven or eight brioche bands by the time you're done. Um, so I really love how the brioche sections mirror each other with the main color and background color. I think that's going to be really beautiful, especially once blocked and worn like as a shawl. Very excited. Um, I'm using Ex Libra Sharn in the Jade Unicorn colorway. And this is in her Shirley base. Which is just so wonderfully soft and squishy. It's a merino rambouillet blend of fiber, I believe. Yeah, 100% super washed US merino slash rambouillet. Fingering three ply. It is just the best yarn I've met with in a while. And then the contrast colors are kind of a mix. Um, the one I'm currently doing is this light white with some speckles 
variegated by Hedgehog Fibers and it was a sock mini. And I believe the colorway is called Pesto. And this orange is from Loops and Threads, just a budget Joanne yarn. This purple is from Knitted Wit. And the black is from Wolf Oak. Okay, and I am holding this all together in my Stolen Minutes bag. I really like that bag. It's so simple and effective and I like the stripey inside and I like that there's a little loop for putting some notions on. I just ordered a new Stolen Minutes bag and I'm excited for it. All right, uh, third whip. I am getting so close, so close to being done with the Dr. Hugh scarf that I'm knitting for my friend Tony. I'm currently on this very big green stripe, but here's where I am right now. So I have this much, this much. So it almost reaches the floor when I have it around my neck. And I would say it's going to probably knitting wise be another at least foot, foot and a half longer. And then when I block it, since it's garter, it should gain a little more length. Um, I'm a little over probably about four fifths of the way through the schematic for the, the scarf. Um, this came from BBC. They put out a, um, schematic showing like how many stripes of each color, which was very helpful <laughs> in uh, figuring out the color scheme and how big to make the stripes. But so close to being done. I can't wait to get that off the needles and give it to Tony. <laughs> very exciting, but it's so much garter. I started this back in late spring or late winter, early spring when Tony first approached me about this, ordered the yarn from Hobie and it's really just been kind of like intermittent. Um, I get kind of bored with just the plain garter stitch. So it's either during like work calls, like work Zoom calls where I don't have to be on camera or present, or sometimes if I really want to pay attention to a TV show, I'll bring this out because I really don't have to <laughs> pay attention once I'm in the midst of the stripes. Um, I've been binging the Homeland. I'm on season one. Um, so I've been knitting this while watching that a little bit. So very close, very close to being done. Very exciting. And the last thing I have to show you is an acquisition. I went on a little Etsy buying spree. And one of the things I got were um, a whole boatload of needlepoint protectors from Hollaback Pearl. <laughs> had to think of the name. Um, but the first set are these, this Pac-Man and Ghost set. It's just so adorable. And I love like old school NES games. So these are just super cute. So cute. Um, and then I got this spooky set that includes these skulls, these sugar skulls, and these little witchy ghosts. Adorable. And a set of these like multiple sided shapes. I'm using one on my my scarf, but very cute. And they came in this adorable <laughs> little festive um, bag with these spooky little llamas or alpacas. So cute. Very cute. Um, 
yeah um that's all of the projects and acquisitions i have to show you today i am still working on my sorrel sweater but i put that in timeout trying to focus on finishing my scarf and my spider socks and get the yarns by design knit along project done by the end of this month because I believe there is a raffle if you um, use the hashtag. Um, one thing I'm looking forward to this week is tomorrow, two things. First is um, our Necromancer Fiber Arts Night at um, Necromancer Brewing, which is here in Pittsburgh. It's a local brew pub, tap room. And about once a month, we've been holding a knitting circle. Well, I say knitting circle because I knit, <laughs> but um, any fiber arts are welcome. We have people that come and do macrame, that crochet, that weave, anything goes. Um, cross stitch, embroidering, whatever. Even if you just want to come and like figure out if there's a craft that interests you and drink a few beers and chat with some local other makers, it's always a good time. So if you're from the area, hope to see you there one day. So um, this month, which is October, is tomorrow, October 19th from 6 p.m. to around 8 p.m. at Necromancer Brewing, and that is on Babcock Boulevard here in Pittsburgh. Now we'll put the full address and description in the show notes. And then next month, it is on Wednesday, November 16th, same time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All right, and then secondly, um, I get to start opening my Ex Libris Halloween yarn countdown. I believe she called it the undead countdown. Um, but I'm very excited to start opening that. I got it in the mail a few weeks ago and just pushed it away in the closet so I wouldn't think about it and <laughs> be tempted to start opening it. But I think I'm going to start doing at least some short daily episodes revealing those um, countdown colorways because I'm really excited. I think that there is 12 minis and then a full skein at the end. I'm so excited. All right. Well, um, I think that's all of the crafting stuff. So just a couple life updates. Um, I mean, nothing major, just being busy and trying to get in some last few adventures and outdoor activities before it starts getting chilly. Um, been doing some running, dog walking, and this weekend, myself, my partner, and a few other friends went to New River Gorge in West Virginia and camped for the weekend, and um, it was really, really a great time. It was beautiful weather, be beautiful foliage. Um, we did some bike riding on gravel and roads and a few folks um, rode mountain bikes. We did some group hikes and I went for a little trail run. Um, we hung out by the fire. We drank some craft beers. Um, we ate some tasty food and it was just a really, really fun time. Um, aside from that, I don't know. It seems busy, but I don't know. I'll go ahead and end that here. And I hope uh, to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.